Today I'll explain the process of protein synthesis or translation in prokaryotes. I'll cover two phases of translation in this lecture that is tRNA charging and initiation. I have already discussed about the requirements of translation in my previous lecture. You can go and see what are the essential requirements for translation in that video. Let's begin with amino acetylation or tRNA charging. First, I want to tell you two terms that is charged tRNA and second is uncharged tRNA. See in the diagram of tRNA, this is a scepter arm. It is a place where amino acid is attached to the tRNA. So when there is no amino acid linked to the tRNA, that tRNA is called uncharged tRNA. Here, in, at this time, there is no amino acid linked to the acceptor arm. So now, this tRNA is called uncharged tRNA. But when amino acid get attached to the tRNA, this tRNA is called charged tRNA and the process in which amino acid get attached to the tRNA is called tRNA charging. tRNA charging uh, process is carried out by enzyme amino acetyl tRNA synthetase. This enzyme recognizes anticodon loop of tRNA so that correct amino acid get attached to the acceptor arm of tRNA as anticodone base pair with the codons of mRNA. So for uh, correct amino acid to get attached to the acceptor arm of tRNA, this amino acetyl tRNA synthetase play an important role. It also recognizes acceptor arm of tRNA where amino acid get attached to the tRNA. So the two places that are recognized by amino acetyl tRNA synthetase on tRNA is its anticodon loop and acceptor arm. Now I'll tell you amino acetylation or tRNA charging. The enzyme which is important for this process to occur is amino acetyl tRNA synthetase. There are 20 amino acids and for each amino acid, there is a amino acetyl tRNA synthetase enzyme. It means there are 20 amino acetyl tRNA synthetase for each amino acid. The process of tRNA charging occur in two steps. The first step is adenylation of amino acid. Amino acid interact with ATP to form amino acyl adenylate enzyme complex and pyrophosphate is released in this step. And this step is catalyzed by enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So in the first step, activation of amino acid occur. In the second step, the activated amino acid get attached to the tRNA. So the second step is the transfer of adenylated amino acid or activated amino acid to tRNA. The amino acyl adenylate enzyme complex which is formed in first step interact with tRNA and this amino acid now get attached to the tRNA at its acceptor arm to form amino acyl tRNA complex. And in this step, AMP and enzyme is, are released. So the final product is amino acyl tRNA in which amino acid get linked to the acceptor arm of tRNA. After the charging of tRNA with their respective amino acid, the next stage of translation is initiation. Now I'll tell you what are the requirements essential for initiation phase. First is initiation codon or start codon. These codon initiate the process of translation and generally AUG 
act as start codone but sometime GUG and UUG can also behave as start codone. AUG when present at initiation site it code for formyl methionine but when AUG is present in the coding region of mRNA it code for methionine it will code for formyl methionine only when it is present at the initiation site in the same way when GUG is present at initiation site it code for formyl methionine in case of prokaryotes but when GUG is present in coding region of mRNA it code for valine the next requirement is initiated tRNA or tRNA FMAT initiated tRNA has formyl methionine attached to its acceptor arm the third requirement is ribosomal subunit in prokaryotes ribosome is 70s type the smaller subunit is 30s and the larger subunit is 50s in normal condition these subunits are present in free state they only associate at the time of protein synthesis there are three sites on these ribosomal subunit e site b site and a site e site is also called exit site through which uncharged tRNA exits the proce process of protein synthesis. P site is the peptidyl tRNA binding site. It holds the tRNA molecule which has growing polypeptide. And A site is the amino acyl tRNA binding site which holds the incoming tRNA charged with an amino acid. The next requirement is recognition sequence. In case of prokaryotes, the recognition sequence is Shine-Dalgarno sequence, which is present in the untranslated region of mRNA, or it is present in the upstream region before the initiation codone. So, uh, in prokaryotes, the ribosome binding site includes Shine-Dalgarno sequence and initiation codone. Shine-Dalgarno sequence is complementary to the 16S rRNA, which is the component of 30S subunit. The next requirement for initiation phase is initiation factors. There are three initiation factors in prokaryotes, IF1, IF2, and IF3. IF1 binds to the A site of 30S subunit. So that the initiated tRNA will not bind to A site, it will bind to P site only. As the initiation codone is present at the P site of ribosomal subunit, so IF1 prevents the binding of initiated tRNA to A site. IF3 prevents the premature association of 50S and 30S subunit. As I have told you uh, that 50S and 30S subunit are present in free state in normal condition. So uh, this IF3 it prevents the binding of these two subunits 50S and sub 30S and the function of IF2 is that it binds to initiated tRNA and it guide this initiated tRNA so that it will bind to the P site of ribosomal of ribosomal subunit. Now I'll explain the steps involved in initiation phase. Prokaryotic mRNA has recognition sequence called Shine-Dalgarno sequence in the untranslated region of mRNA which is present upstream to the initiation site. This sequence Shine-Dalgarno sequence is complementary to 16S rRNA. C 
16s rRNA is a component of 30s subunit. So 30s subunit recognize Shine Delgano sequence of mRNA. Now the first step of initiation. Initiation factor 1 or IF1 binds to the A site of 30s subunit. IF3 also binds to 30s subunit. So 30s subunit with IF1 and IF3 recognizes Shine Delgano sequence and binds to the mRNA at ribosomal binding site which includes Shine Delgano sequence and AUG or initiation codon. In second step, IF2 or initiation factor 2 with GTP binds to the initiated tRNA and it guides initiated tRNA so that it will bind to the P site of 30S subunit. This complex is called 30S initiation complex which include mRNA with ribosomal subunit 30S and initiation factor IF3, IF1, IF2 and initiated tRNA. This complex is called 30S initiation complex. In third step, 50S subunit joins the 30S initiation complex. The joining of 50S and 30S subunit require energy which is used by the hydrolysis of GTP attached to the IF2. When 50S subunit binds to the 30S subunit of ribosome, initiation factors IF1, IF2 and IF3 leaves the complex and the final complex which is formed by the process of initiation is 70S initiation complex and this complex include the two subunits of ribosome 50S and 30S, mRNA and initiated tRNA. So the whole process is initiation phase of translation. In my next video, I'll explain elongation and termination.